Hey, man. What's up? Oh, not much. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm happy you're here. Thanks. Uh, have you ever heard of <laughs> what are you going to pass the buckets in a second? What was that? I'm happy I you're can't, here. I can't. I'm just uh, happy. Let us know a little bit about you. Fill out that card yeah, in the seat drop in front it in of the, you. Drop it in the bucket. There'll be someone pulls up next to you in the stoplight. It's going to pass a bucket over to you. Roll your window down. What are you talking? This is if you're about? listening on the podcast. Oh, yeah. The churches do that. They yeah. know where you are. I like the <laughs> idea that someone's listening on a run right now, and someone's going to pull up next, <laughs> next to him to the, the stoplight. Okay, here's, and that's like here's for the offering. Pretty creepy, you know. <laughs> I like I like churches that have that like extra touch, you know, where it's like sure for the online experience. Anyways. I honked at one of my friends walking the other day. <laughs> this is real. Um. <laughs> And she looked like I was like, she's out there walking with her dog and I was driving to the grocery store and I did. Huh? Hey, <laughs> uh, I don't think she realized what kind of car I drive. I don't know if she knew it was me. Yeah, uh, but then also <laughs> later she tweeted uh, and she said because she's like a counselor or whatever yeah. and she she said don't honk at people you think are attractive on the side of the road <laughs> and I had to message her and be like <laughs> first of all, <laughs> Get over yourself, <laughs> okay? Because I was just no saying. No one said hi. I thought that. <laughs> I was just saying hi. Second of all, second of all, I'm gonna hog at every person I see walking now. Well, she did a whole like you know it could like trigger a trauma response in them, and I'm oh like, my gosh, oh. I dude, listen. <laughs> there's some stuff that I, that makes me a little. It's <sighs> you. <know, it laughs> we should cut it before we say something cancelable. <laughs> You're right. It's like model trains. No one's no one, like you don't need the Pentagon's permission to do it. <laughs> yeah, you just tell the audience you do, you don't read. Is He's that what a that middle was? aged adult. <laughs> no, he we write. I know what you're saying. Okay, like, you think they're gonna like catch that. aliens with a fax machine, dude? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got well, twenty two million dollars from the government, bro. <laughs> Things I learned last night. Uh, hey man, have you ever What's going on? <laughs> Skinwalker Ranch. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Is there an update? Oh, I'm 100% serious. Is Have you done this? No. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, this is a part two. Uh, we've covered this before. Okay, for a second, I was I was genuinely worried that you did not know that we did a Skinwalker Ranch episode. And I was about to cover Bro, your it again. eyes for a second. I was like, oh shoot, he's he's toast. But I was honestly gonna let you do it, and we were gonna release it. I just want everyone to know how good of a friend I am. That uh, you'll know I when we're just... old, dude. When we're old men, and we still do this podcast. Podcasting is so old. So old. it's gone. It's yeah. like it's like. It's like it's TV like sets. Oh, all right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like no one does that anymore, but we're still doing it. And you yeah. like just bring and up I stuff that we've same already story done. Every episode, every episode, every is episode the same is story, the same topic. Wow. That'd be a good show. This is a part two. Just a show called it's the same topic and we just do the same topic every episode. Would it be a good and show? see what happens by the end of it? It's like a game of telephone. Uh-huh. It's a game of podcast. Okay. Uh, and see where it ends up at the end. If this is really about Skinwalker Ranch, I'm it not is. excited because of the YouTube comments from the first Skinwalker Ranch episode. <laughs> do we have an update for real? We do. Uh, so yeah, we covered this before. March. Enough to do a full episode? Yes. So we've covered this before uh, in <laughs> March of 2022. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we covered this before. <laughs> Jeez, dude. Yeah, we've covered this in March of 2022. If you haven't heard that episode, uh, now's your chance to go we'll back link and it listen in the to description it. Yeah, here. it's a uh, it's a fun episode. I listened to it this morning. I forgot how good that episode was. Um, All of our episodes are good. Yeah, but this except one, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this one. You know the one. This one we had the bit. Uh, this is a new thing I want to do. I did this for the glitter monster Kay. in the Discord. I asked our Discord to draw. Oh, I saw think. that. I was going to yeah. use it for the thumbnail. Yeah, and I think uh, I want to do that. The Skinwalker is another good one. It's You're like, hey guys, will you draw this? Yeah, I like having them draw stuff. All right, we have some artists in the Discord. We do, we do. We have um, some people who are not artists but still draw. But it, they and try. I like that about. Well, them. one of our submissions came from uh, Mickey. Mickey sent it from uh, Excel. She drew it in an Excel spreadsheet. And that's the one I was going to use for the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. It's actually uh, pretty good. If we don't know what we're talking about, Discord. Um, yeah, what's Discord? Discord is like uh, unprofessional Slack. Discord's like AIM. Um, yeah, kind of. But uh, <laughs> unprofessional Slack. <laughs> that's what it is. But uh, 
Yeah, because Slack is just Discord in Slacks. You know, that's actually very accurate. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> that's what they should brand it. They as. should do that. Um, but we have a, our Patreon supporters get access to our Discord, where we're, we've been messaging and, and play games, and yeah. they're very funny. They're it's funnier than fun. yeah. Tim. <laughs> 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 I'm Dana Skidwalker Ranch. If you're here for the first time, um, oh shoot, is this from the UFO stuff? Uh, kinda, kinda. Okay. Technically, yes. Sure. Um, so here's the deal. So if you don't know much about Skinwalker Ranch and you're free to go back to listen to the old episode, long story short, there's a ranch in Utah called Skinwalker Ranch, and it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also all the other ranches in Utah are weird. <laughs> Mormons are kind of like that. <laughs> Uh, so it's had four owners over its history. There was a guy named Kenneth and <laughs> not Kenneth and Edith Myers, a guy named Kenneth, his wife, Edith Myers owned it. Uh, the majority of the life of the Property. ranch yeah. um, from 1934 to 1994. No problems. Everything normal ranch experience as far as we know, like as as think about life on ranch. That's the life that they lived in Utah, a Utah ranch. Kay. That's what they had. Um, have you seen? Never mind. Stop. Uh, <laughs> We've done too much. 1994 to 1996 was Terry and Gwen Sherman, and they had a think about a life in a Utah ranch. That's not what they experienced. Totally different. Yeah. Um, they got spooked. Yeah, they got spooked. They saw aliens and monsters and werewolves. Uh, you name it. And they went to and go find the old people who owned it before them, and the government was like, "Who?" Yeah, th- those people don't exist. In fact, neither does your ranch. They've never existed. <laughs> You're in, in fact, a field right now. Earth isn't real. What's <laughs> yeah? Oh, I like that there's <laughs> gaslighting them real bad. Okay, there's no such thing as Earth. What are you talking about? Unplug yourself. Like what? Are you, what? <laughs> uh, and so they made this big deal about it being super weird. Yeah. Uh, and a uh, real estate millionaire named Robert Bigelow was like, "Oh, I want it," and so he bought it in 1996. Dude, here's the thing, man. You know, I want to buy a house just to create some lore. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then sell it. Mm-hmm. You know, just be like, it's haunted. It's haunted. Oh, yeah. Write a book or two. Someone and- got murdered here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All really? hail the watcher. Um, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, because do you know how much I would pay for the watcher's house? I would pay a lot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how much can you pay? $657,000. $657. Yeah. <laughs> And six hundred fifty-seven cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Why did you say? Would you just okay? Six five seven Boulevard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's, I whatever. Say it's I'm saying if I had a ranch. Yes. If I bought a ranch. Yes. Yes. You know I'd make it like that's a good podcast. Jaren buys a ranch. Jaren bought a zoo. <laughs> And it's on it. <laughs> it's on it. And, and he built a fort in the garage, and no one no, knew. <laughs> no one knew. I bought a zoo, and no one knew. Oh my god, Jared bought this zoo. <laughs> Speaking of zoos, my uh, did you know that my my I've told you about my cousins who owned like a zoo, tig- yeah, like tigers and oh, bears oh, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not oh, a my. zoo, but like a Tiger King zoo. Like yeah, one of those yeah, fake yeah, zoos. Yeah, 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 one of those fake zoos. <laughs> uh, but they had to get like the Ohio came and took all their animals after that guy who lived in the next county over from them let yeah. out all of his animals. Yeah, yeah. And then Ohio was like, ah. Anyway, we were in Ohio and we drove past the property and I forgot that it's just in a neighborhood. <laughs> like it's just like I was like, yeah, it's like way out in the country. You yeah. know, there's a big field on the other side, but yeah. like they're just in a neighborhood <laughs> and like. You know how when you're a kid and you're like, this place is huge because yeah. you're a kid. Yeah. When yeah, you're an yeah. adult, that's just a lot. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a house. It's like a double lot. Like they, they got two they acres. They just turned their yeah. yard into a zoo. And I forgot they did that. <laughs> and it's like, it's kind of like a garage them. sale. They got signs on all, all the street lights. They're like, never zoo ends. this way. And they sell tigers. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They were very kind to their animals. Yeah, they had masking tape on their paws. Three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like peeling off. So I tried to haggle. I was like, "Come on, come on." Yeah, yeah. six dollars fifty seven cents. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So Robert yes, Bigelow, there's a a property in Utah, mm-hmm. and there's some sketchy stuff that they claimed happened, but the old people never experiencing that. The stuff. old people never experienced it. And then these people Terry moved and in, and then this rich guy was like, "I want dips. it because of the weird stuff." Yes, and so he. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. 
So he founds the NIDS, which is the National Institute for Discovery Science. And the idea yes. was, I'm going to hire a bunch of paranormal people to investigate this. Not to Here's, be confused with lids, <laughs> the store that just sells small hats. <laughs> hey, cool hat, man. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Dude, this episode sucks. So many callbacks. Oh my gosh, so man. Many this sucks. If you found this podcast and you have no idea what's going on, they so hate us. So many callbacks. Okay. Robert Bigelow, he buys it, starts the nids. Yes. And for a couple of years, nothing really happens. Yeah. Um, and then it's kind of quiet. He's like, dang it, they made it up <laughs> to sell me this house. Well, it's really quiet. And he's out, he's publicly saying, you're like, yeah, we're not really seeing anything happening there. Um, and then a few years later, in I think 2004, a book releases uh, called Skinwalkers. I think <laughs> I don't remember what the book. You, was called. you came that first half of the sentence was so confident, and you just <laughs> called <sighs> hot boy. <laughs> I know, I know the name of the sec- oh hunt for the Skinwalker. Okay, uh, uh, I I was gonna call it the second. We book. could do There's a skin. A we later. could do like a. We could do a podcast on skin. We're trying to figure out a, a true crime podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Hunt for the Skinwalker Skin investigative podcast comes out and it is a full book of the craziest stories you've ever heard. Yeah, werewolves and dinosaur beavers and UFOs and ghosts and portals and skinwalkers. It's yeah. just insanity. Um, and it's like, wow, I thought a couple of years ago nothing was happening. Um, and then the nids mysteriously gets shut down a couple years after that and by who by them by the nids. Okay, they or were like the skinwalkers. They came up with their cookies and like hey, we no, I mean like the, the government hammered. didn't shut them down. Uh, okay, allegedly. Uh, so they get shut down uh, and then in 2016. So I was trying to do what you do with your nose over here. Blowing into the microphone the whole it's time. It's my, uh, it's my deviant. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, dude. Uh, uh, what was I saying? It, it, so in 2016, Robert Bigelow sells it to Brandon Fugal. Kay. Fugal uh, is he's like, there's a lot of stuff happening here. He's another real estate millionaire uh, who's just building a bunch of stuff in Utah. Yeah, and uh, but he is a lifelong Mormon. And he's not as, I mean, he's interested in the paranormal, paranormal stuff, definitely into sci-fi and things like that. But for him, the bigger part of the goal is if he can prove that there's paranormal activity happening there, then it proves the existence of God. Because if there's demons, then there's got to be a God. Um, so that's okay. kind of his angle. He immediately that's his goes, motivation. <clears throat> yeah, he immediately goes and trademarks Skinwalker Ranch as a media brand. And then they release the Skinwalker Ranch TV show on History Channel. Right. And follow the whole story. Uh, we covered this in our last episode and we basically were like, this is a stupid idea except for all the alien stuff. The alien stuff is super legitimate, but all the rest of it is super stupid. Yeah, dumb. <laughs> yeah. Um, except for the part about God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's uh, um, a guy named Stephen Green Street. Um, okay. Sounds like a young adult author. Uh, kind of. Uh, he's 44. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you just tell the audience you, do, you don't read. Is He's that what a that middle was? aged adult. <laughs> no, he would write. I know what you're saying. Okay, but All I right. took it. Okay, whatever. It's called a joke. Uh, <laughs> well, it was a good one, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. So he is a journalist. That's why people leave one star reviews right there. <laughs> He's a journalist for the New York Post. You're joking around too much. <laughs> I mean, sorry. It's a comedy podcast. I need Alex, to be more serious. Please, I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> that Celsius is just that Celsius is in my eyes right now, dude. <laughs> okay, in my eyes, dude. I'm that, telling you, did you, drink it wrong. I uh, feel the caffeine <laughs> in my eyes, dude. A little bit. Um, so worried. What'd you just say? I, I said I feel the caffeine no, in my eyes. No, no, no. You know, he's a journalist for who? The New York Post. Oh, okay. Um, and he has for a long time. <laughs> I had a series on on YouTube on the YouTubes called Basement Office. Okay. In this series, he brought on Luis Elizondo. Uh, uh, that's the only name that comes to mind. A bunch of UFO people. All right. To talk about UFOs and aliens and things like sure. that. Sure. Big fan of UFOs and aliens. Who's and the aliens like guy? 
You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the guy from uh, Ancient Aliens? Yeah. I don't know his name. Okay. I just know he's. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, big proponent of aliens and stuff. So he digs into. Remember the big UFO report in like 2018 with the Tic Tac UFO and all that stuff? Yes. Um, a big part of that was Luis Elizondo, which I'll show you a picture of him. Actually, I didn't grab okay. this. Let me grab a picture so you, I can jog your men, memory on him. A lot of people call him Lou. I don't know who he is. I'm going to tell you right now. <clears throat> I don't know who he is. Guarantee you're going to recognize him. I won't guarantee it. You guarantee I'll recognize I this person. I guarantee you're going to recognize him. You, you, <laughs> I, I could mean, not, I could not be more confident that you're going to recognize this guy. Hold on. Let me get a recognizable picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> really selling it. <laughs> oh, hold on. That doesn't look anything like I want him to. Hold on. You wouldn't recognize that. <laughs> that, one. that doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> Let me get someone who looks like someone. <laughs> you know. Just stop. Stop right now. <laughs> stop. I don't even stop. have to do the joke. <laughs> Oh, not that one. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just had that in my presenter. <laughs> I keep it. It's my phone background. <laughs> oh, ever since he offered me those tickets to Winter Jam. You uh, this guy? I do recognize this guy. <laughs> yeah, he looks like the bassist of Skillet. <laughs> That's actually, I think that was what he did before. Um, no, so Luis Elizondo. I have no idea who this guy is. You don't know, recognize him? No. Do you watch TV? Yeah. I ever, don't watch the same TV you, that you watch. Have you ever looked at Fox News before? <laughs> uh, what is or he? Any news. He's been all over. Anyways, um, so I don't was, watch the news. Here, let me get. Let me get. Stop. Uh, don't. What? What are you doing? Getting a picture of him on the news? No, I'm just getting a picture of him that you would recognize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you guarantee this one as well? Uh, no, I, apparently those, not. Apparently he I looks shouldn't. like this guy looks like in I mean this in a good way. Like he looks like a guy who's been a youth pastor for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he does actually. And like it's rare to find those guys. Sometimes I'll do shows and like I'll go to a church and the youth pastor is like, yeah, I've been doing this for about two decades being the youth pastor. Like no aspirations to like because a lot of people treat youth ministry like a ladder. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a step toward a different position. Yeah, uh, and like I, I love it when I run into somebody who's like, oh, no, I just love students. Yeah, and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, and aliens. And you're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Were you finding something else, or is there, are we going to keep talking about? Uh, well, this I was just Lou. waiting for you to finish your thing. Okay, go ahead. You ready? Sure. Okay. Hey, thanks for being part of this episode. Uh, if you want to help us do more of this, you want to help us grow our show. One of the easiest and best ways to do that is to join our Patreon. Uh, it's a way for you financially to support the show, and you get a lot in return. You get access to our Discord channel. You get bonus content that comes out. Uh, you get exclusive merchandise and like live Zoom hangouts where we're both just hanging out, eating pizza, just getting to know each other. The biggest thing is, is we want to know you uh, more as an individual and as a friend. So thanks for supporting our show. If you don't support us financially, we're not pressed about it. We're not like mad, um, but I'll find you. So text till to six, six, eight, six, six to keep yourself from being found. All right, because if you don't, I will hunt you down. <laughs> So this is um, at the podium is Chris Mellon. I'm supposed to know any of these guys and then oh, I know Slender Man in the middle there. <laughs> <laughs> that does look like Slender Man. Uh, yeah, that, that's a couple defense contractors in the middle of them is Hal put off. You might remember him from the remote viewing episode. He's the this guy. The guy. Uh, this is get the guy speaking. Yeah, is I believe quote. You can tell me if I'm wrong. I think he's in the president's show at Disneyland. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> is the, am I wrong? But he looks like he would be one of the robots. No, that's Christopher Mellon, um, okay. who used to be uh, deputy assist, assistant secretary of the defense for intelligence. Just on body language, can we just go off body language real yeah, quick? Yeah, go off of it. Okay, so guy speaking. Look how close his feet are together. Okay, he's a big old nerd, dude. <laughs> he's a uh, this he, guy. He's an animatronic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's not. <laughs> his legs do not move. That 
that, but, that is not real. I, I realized I couldn't say half of that quote. After I already oh, started that oh, quote, I you started said, to go. You started real. to that go. That is not real. <laughs> the airplane lady. I did. I did. That that person <laughs> is not real. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, second guy's dad, super rich. Yeah. Um, he's not, but his dad is rich. Like that's you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Close. Yeah. Uh, but I, I get third you. guy's Lou. Lou uh, is like the bad boy of this conference. Yeah. Lou is just like. Yeah, I believe in aliens <laughs> and I'd love to cage fight one um, guy next to him straight up is like a vampire um, <laughs> and when he speaks, it's like, oh, yeah, I believe in aliens um, and then the guy next to him is uh, his handler. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like, what do they call that a familiar um, and then the guy on the end is just a billionaire who bought his way onto the panel. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, the, dude, the guy in the middle freaks me out. <laughs> I'm not joking. Scary. He scares me. He's dude. very scary. You should be scared of him. Uh, I am too. Uh, no, okay, so you are um, close actually. Um, so the first is Chris Mellon and so he was the deputy uh, secretary of defense under the Clinton administration makes sense. Um, we'll skip that guy for a second. Then Luis Elizondo, we know him. Um, and then the next guy, you're right, is a vampire. <laughs> He's oh, nice. a vampire for forever. No, I'm pretty sure that one's Steve Justice. And then Hal put off. You might remember him from our remote viewing episode. He's the Ben the Spoons guy and see things on the on Mars. Oh, That's him. Okay, um, but he was an actual government contractor. Um, yeah, uh, and an electrical engineer. And then the last guy, I'm pretty sure, is. Steve uh, Chris Miser, um, all government ties. There's Chris Miser, uh, a government contractor, uh, worked with um, billionaire. Mm, I don't think so. And not um, a super rich guy. But yeah, worked with I think Skunk Works. But don't quote me on that. I'm not. How much positive. would you hate to be like a 997 millionaire? You know what I'm saying? Like you're just so close. I mean, I would just call myself a billionaire at that point. Yeah. Well. Okay. I mean, at my point where I'm at now, billionaire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a billionaire. No cool. one's gonna check. <laughs> According to the internet, I'm worth like a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Those are always like way off. Um, yeah, super underreported. And then I don't know if you know this. The guy on the left, the one that you I said don't know. His yeah, dad it looks is like rich. his dad's rich. Yeah, that's Tom DeLong from Blink 182. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. This yeah, is so him being serious. This is Tom DeLong's company. To the Stars Media is his company that he started, and he put together this team of all-star. Uh, I hate that he's an adult contractors. I know it's so interesting seeing him in here being super professional because if you watch him in any of his shows, he's not. Um, uh, but Look, uh, he's so intently listening. Yeah, he's serious. In this same in this same press conference, this was the first press conference that they did with it when they shared their findings. <laughs> you know what it is about the vampire guy? What? It's that everyone else is looking at the guy speaking. <laughs> and he's not, and he is just not. <laughs> That's what it is. And he's also everyone else is like, oh yeah, and he's just <laughs> <laughs> There's someone in the crowd who's like, is he looking at me? Everyone in the crowd is thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> Every single person's like, I think he's it's staring he's right staring at me. Right at me. Why yeah. is he doing that? His eyes have that effect, you know? <laughs> they, they look it's like, like he they're just, that's what I'm saying. Direction. Wherever you're sitting in the room, it looks like he's looking at you. <laughs> Man, <laughs> spooky guy, man. Yeah, um, not pictured in the shot is the queen hanging upside down from the rafters. That's what that empty chairs for. <laughs> no, in this in this press conference, this was the first time we saw the Tic Tac video. They leaked it, um, which was before it was declassified. The government was real mad about that. And then a year later, sure. they were like, "Fine, that's ours. It's yeah. real." Um, uh, Tom also in this uh, video, he was like, "He's like, we're building our own UFO. Haven't seen that yet, um, but." We're building our own UFO. Yeah, that was one thing that he said our company's We're doing. We're building something and we can't identify it. <laughs> what do you mean you're building a well, UFO? Well, he's building a revolutionary. You're building an FO. <laughs> he's building you a know rev- what it is. revolutionary it's not aircraft unidentified. is what It's a flying object. Using the technology that they've uncovered, I guess, this group. Sure. And so Luis Elizondo ends up becoming like kind of the de facto face of this company. Even though it's Tom's company, yeah. Tom was busy being a rock star. Um, which he quit his band. I mean, he still had angels and airwaves and but he was like <laughs> writing 
kids novels or something. I don't know. Kids um, novels. He was. He's not a kid though. <laughs> How was he doing? He's that? a grown How do man. He can't write kids novels. <laughs> you can't write kids novels as a grown <laughs> adult. Um, so uh, Luis Elizondo He's becomes like kind of the de facto <laughs> uh, face of this company. Okay. Uh, and he goes on this press tour. Yeah, talking about UFOs, and he is making pretty strong claims that the the things that they've looked at um, are evidence that there's something else out there that's not of non-human origin. Okay, um, this leads to the Pentagon putting together a special committee, um, eventually becoming a whole new program, multi-million dollar program to investigate these unidentified flying objects. Okay, um, and that's still in operation to this day sure. as a result of what this group did. Luis Elizondo, his background, a little bit about him. He was in the military. He was a uh, counterintelligence guy. Um, went on to the Pentagon and sure. uh, was the director of a program called ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Um, and he headed up this program. And the whole purpose of this program, it was a, um, I guess, I'm trying to think of the right word. A secret. It was a secret program. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I wasn't going to say secret, but then I was like, I'll just say secret. It was a secret program in the Pentagon uh, to look at all of these cases of UFOs and be like, it's actually alien or it's just like a balloon or something, you know? Okay. Uh, and that was his job. And so he's coming forward as like a whistleblower now talking about all this stuff. And uh, in comes Stephen Greenstreet. Stephen Greenstreet's talking about all this stuff over the past few years. We've had all these explosive, like here's this video, here's this video, here's this stuff, here's this guy in the military who's talking about what he's seen or whatever. Sure. Um, and so Stephen Greenstreet starts digging into this a little bit and he discovers um, something's awry with this story. Um, <clears throat> it, it all. Okay. So Luis Elizondo, uh, he was the head. I think you were going to say Louis CK. For a <laughs> I was like, how is Louis he involved? C.K. Is Louis like, CK. You know how Jason Bourne is an FBI agent? Stop. <laughs> Okay. Stand up comics is the same thing. No one suspects the funny guy. <laughs> Sorry. We cut that out. <laughs> so, A Tip yeah. uh, was a program that. Uh, Super secret. Luis Elizondo was sure. heading up. Uh, he was the program director, uh, and uh, he claimed that they had $22 million worth of funding, founded in 2007. He claims all this. Yes. We don't have and any documents was, that prove this. Uh, 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 kind. Kind of. I mean, like, any, I guess anybody really could just be like, ah, I did some secret work for the government. Okay, so and the government isn't going to be like, no. So we'll look. We'll look we'll, this is where we're heading. So in 2017, he leaves, and uh, three years later, he joins. Or no, in 2017, he leaves to join to the Stars Academy and starts becoming the face of alien disclosure, basically. Okay. Um, and in that process, everyone was like, "This is the former director of ATIP, the super secret program at the Pentagon." We have record of him working at the Pentagon. We have a record of him working in counterintelligence um, and being a very high-ranking officer in the DoD. Uh, however, we can't find anything about ATIP, and the story that's told is that it's because it's a super secret program. Sure, uh, and so the government's that's not going to release any information about ATIP specifically. But also, he can just make it up. <laughs> uh, so Stephen Greenstreet does some digging in along with a handful of other journalists uh, outside of his specific like in his network, but not for the New York Post other journalists. He's kind of worked with and so okay. he starts doing some digging and he finds that um, he was a part of a tip, but the uh, the reporting on a tip was very misleading, especially in those early days where uh, the abbreviation a tip was correct but a lot of people were messing up what a tip stood for. And so there was advanced aerospace threat identification program, advanced aeronautical threat identification program. Okay. Uh, advanced airborne threat identification program. So there was advanced aerial threat identification program. So all these different versions where that a was different. And so people were submitting these FOIA requests from the government and they'd be like, that doesn't exist oh. because everybody was getting it wrong. Sure. <laughs> Uh, but nobody knew that at the time. Everyone's just like uh, the, the government's denying that this is real and it's they weren't denying. They were just like, yeah, what you asked us for doesn't exist. 
And, and instead of being like, oh, hey, here's the thing you're asking for, they're just like, that's not real. Which <laughs> is pretty convenient. I'm saying like if I'm the records department yeah. and someone puts it in, that's not my job. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not my job. You look and you look through your files and you see it. You're like, oh, it's that's like the what time that I did a gig <laughs> and I got a check <laughs> that was made out to Jason Myers. Yeah. With Myers spelled incorrectly. Yeah. And Bank of America would not deposit it because yeah. neither name matched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're like, this isn't you. It's close. And I was like, it is me though. You know me, Gary. Yeah. 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 And I constantly deposit checks that are not even close to my name. <laughs> I just find them. <laughs> I just find checks. You know what they say? If you find a $20 bill on the street, it's yours. If you find a $2 million check on the street, it's yours. doesn't matter who's you know, name is I was actually at the store <laughs> and, uh, and a guy backed over my bicycle <laughs> and I was like, hey, mister, you got to pay for that. <laughs> and he wrote me a check but forgot to fill out the amount part because he was like in a rush or something. Yeah, he was a busy man and I went home and I put in one million dollars, <laughs> and they cashed that. Yeah, and they said okay. And I yeah, bought a and house. Cashed it at the grocery store. And I had a <laughs> slightly inappropriate relationship with like, a woman who should not have been anywhere near <laughs> a thirteen-year-old kid in that movie. <laughs> uh, so, long story short, after a giant <laughs> rabbit trail of trying to track down this ATIP program, yeah, what they discovered is that ATIP was never its name. A tip wasn't a nickname that it got, um, and the reason it got the name is because Senator Harry Reid um, was uh, heading up this A tip program. He was the person in Senate that said, "Let's do this," uh, and so he realized that there was some um, I don't want to say sketchy things that were happening, but things that um, the government probably would be like, "Let's stop giving money to this," and sure. so he was like, "We need to kind of." get shadowy here. And so he made another name for it called the advanced uh, aerospace threat identification program a tip and started calling it that and had everybody in the program start calling it that um, to kind of keep it a little hidden. What's well, so he made like a shadow company basically <laughs> uh, to keep getting funding from the government S- sort of yeah, yeah, kind of made, he made it. I mean it was still it was still legitimate when he made he a DBA. In, it, Kind of, but it wasn't. There was nothing on paper. There was no paperwork. So there's no paper trail. Of this. Okay. It was just in every document, in every document talking about it, he would call it a tip. Yeah, it's like, uh, that, it's like that kid from my school. His name is Biscuit. Like, there's no paperwork that says his name is Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, but everyone knows him. But Biscuit. he showed up one day and was like, I'm Biscuit. And we were like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> if that's what you want to be called. He ran real fast one time. We called him Biz Quick for a week, dude. <laughs> we like, Whoa. He's a fast kid. Uh, the real name of the program was the Advanced Aerospace Weapon Systems App- Application Program, or OSAP. Um, OSAP. OSAP. Uh, so, <laughs> this program uh-huh. uh, is interesting because this program was founded uh, in 2007, uh, and in 2008, uh, they put out a request for proposals for defense contractors. Uh, to earn twenty-two million dollars to investigate, specifically, this is what the document. We should be defense contractors. How do we get into that? Uh, lie. Uh, <laughs> they, okay. They put out a request for bids uh, to research uh, weapon systems that our adversaries have uh, and predict where they will be in forty years um, technologically. That was oh, the, okay. I see the, what you're saying. I see what you're the saying. The contract. Yeah. So they put out this request for bids. Uh, in 2008. Uh, weirdly, this request for bid comes out in 2008, but in 2007, uh, Robert Bigelow's company, Bigelow Aerospace, wins that request for bid a year before it comes out. So something sketchy here is happening already. Um, what do you mean they win the bid? So typically, the request for bid comes out, all the companies are like, here's what we'll do, here's how much it'll cost, and then they award it to one of the companies. Sure. A year before the request for bid even comes out. The government rewards it to Bigelow. Yeah. Before it ever. Even and then out. in 2008, they were like, they're like, hey, here's a request bid. for bids. And then they were like, quietly, like, we already gave this to somebody. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Bigelow was a campaign funder for Harry Reid. 
Um, he was, they were close. They were tight. They always, always been tight. So it's pretty clear that Bigelow was like, hey, I got a cool idea. I, I need twenty two million dollars. And Senator Reid was like, sweet, you got it. And then a year later, he was like, shoot, I just gave twenty two million dollars to this guy for no reason. And so he puts out this request for bid and then lets it sit for a minute and pulls it back to kind of have a paper trail of like, oh, yeah, we gave it to this guy. He won. But it was a year late. He gives him twenty two million dollars. Okay. Um, and that's where NIDS comes from. And so NIDS begins studying Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, and it's with weird. twenty two million dollars from the government. Yes. Dang. And so we got to start being corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I like I corrupt. Uh, I didn't uh, acknowledge that, but that was a great line. Thank you. <laughs> I snuck it in there. It was good. Um, and so Robert Bigelow takes that twenty two million dollars and he hires a team of wacky voodoo scientists. Yeah, <laughs> that was sure. I was on their LinkedIn wacky, wacky voodoo scientist. <laughs> um, I am a aerospace engineer. Uh, yeah, I am a neurosurgeon. Yeah, I'm a wacky kind of guy. <laughs> You're like, okay, we'll take you. <laughs> but yeah, all the scientists were. It was Hal Putoff, the guy who did the remote viewing in the 70s. It yeah. was UFO research. Tom DeLong was- from Blink 182. <laughs> it's not the kind of group that instills confidence. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so they start studying Skinwalker Ranch, and they're finding nothing. But there's a report from a security guard that he had hired. And the security guard did an interview with Stephen Greenstreet, mm-hmm. and he said the culture was really rough. And he said that nothing was happening at the ranch, and everybody knew nothing was happening at the ranch. But every day we had to fax reports of what <laughs> happened at the ranch that day to Bigelow. Bigelow lived in Nevada, so nothing. he wasn't even on site. Fax. <laughs> That's not what a fax is. <laughs> he wasn't finishing the email with facts. <laughs> nothing. Fax. fax. Sin. That's my new signature. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> no, he was off in, in Nevada, and so every day he's getting these reports that nothing's happening at the ranch, and he's getting real he's mad. Just, he's getting it's him re- tearing the paper out of the <laughs> fax machine. <laughs> what year is this? 2007. They got an email. It's too late for faxes. <laughs> it's way too late. You to think you're gonna catch <laughs> aliens with a fax machine, dude? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You well, got twenty two million dollars from the government, bro. <laughs> Invent Slack or something, dude. <laughs> like at least Discord. You don't gotta make it professional. <laughs> you know? Uh, you're right, you're right. Uh, but yeah, he's getting these facts says every day. Sure. That say, hey, hey, Bigelow, uh, nothing's happening. And he's getting really upset. Yeah. And people started to feel like their jobs were on the line. And so people started just lying and just making stuff up and faxing it off and being like, we saw a dino beaver today. <laughs> and he'd be like, good job, guys. <laughs> you found it. You found something. It was like, we saw a wormhole open up and a bunch of interdimensional creatures started crawling out of it. It was crazy. We saw a dino <laughs> beaver today. It was the way you <laughs> delivered that. Um, how was work today? Uh, you know, I don't know. I was like 15 minutes late. Traffic was ridiculous, dude. And like my lunch, I had microwaved it, but you know when they microwave it in the microwave in the middle is still kind of cold. So oh, frustrating. Dude. Saw a dino beaver. <laughs> <laughs> back up. Oh, and then I got traffic race. was back. <laughs> <laughs> what could have caused that? We live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's Skinwalker Ranch. So, so because everybody started, they're feeling, just lying. Yeah, they're lying to, to keep their jobs. Yeah, um, and then uh, one of the uh, you know that's what our team does as well. They lie to us to keep yeah, their jobs. There's one team member who's supporting us like a thousand dollars a month on Patreon just to make us believe we have <laughs> believe supporters. We've got a lot. Yeah, and he made like 20 different accounts. Yeah, no, he already had those accounts. That's what he watches on YouTube <laughs> on, so it boosts our views. <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, I think you're And you're a jerk to him every week. <laughs> <laughs> Our work culture is terrible because of you, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's cuz we don't have Slack, we're faxing oh, our that's right, dude. To each other. And our team's not getting them. <laughs> They're backed they, up. They don't dude. have fax machines. Plug in your fax machine. It'll be like uh, it'll be like a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh no, my gosh. So orders. Go to the store, buy tomatoes. We're not gonna have enough for this. 
<laughs> All we serve is tomatoes. <laughs> we just, we're just a tomato restaurant. Wait, what? We're just a restaurant that just what? serves <laughs> just, just tomatoes. Of the tomatoes. Marinara. Marinara. You want some marinara? Pico? You want ketchup? You want a raw tomato? We won't yeah. even do anything with it. We'll hand it right to you straight from the counter. Sure. <laughs> yeah, can I get three raw tomatoes? <laughs> raw <laughs> tomatoes? <laughs> Is that Celsius hitting your eyes? What's going on right now? I feel, I feel the caffeine in my eyeballs, man. <laughs> all right, for a tomato restaurant, <laughs> wouldn't we just be a, all right? Get us to the farmers market. Uh, so we're like the- we're like sabotaging <laughs> other tomato booths. <laughs> We're the only tomato guys in town, okay? Hey, uh, we do more than tomatoes. You know that, right? No, no. We're the tomato. We're guys. the only tomatoes. If you want tomatoes, you got tomatoes. There's <laughs> two of them. You know, you go say yeah. And our our names are both made up. <laughs> <laughs> Not on paper. <laughs> Not on paper. Legally, you'll never be able to find that. But as far as you're concerned, and as far as anyone's concerned, it's made up. <laughs> A lot of people think we're NATO, but we're not related. We're not related this to NATO stupid. at all. Please stop. <laughs> this is so dumb. And I'm I'm angry. I'm angry at how much time I've wasted. <laughs> okay, so I'm angry listening back to this later. I'm mad right now. <laughs> You're in your car on your commute, driving to another recording. Someone of the episode. next to me at the red light just stuck a bucket, <laughs> a bucket out in my window. Oh my god! Like, Get that bucket out of my car. Get that bucket out of my face. <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like this, we've got a lot of great ones. Let me recommend a recent one, Hitchbot. Uh, basically, some Canadian scientists said, what if we made a robot that hitchhiked across the country? You think it could make it? Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, it's a fun episode. I like it a lot. Uh, you need to check it out. One of my favorite recent jokes is in there. Uh, so check that one out. But if not, thanks for being here. So one of the program directors, his name is Colm Kelleher, another okay. one of the voodoo wacky scientists, man. Yeah, I'm um, a wacky guy. I don't know. Dr. Wacky guy. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the hospital. You got a surgery on the counter. You're sitting there in the scrubs or whatever they give you. No <laughs> back. Your butt's just hanging out. <laughs> he, comes, he sits down like they do where they like roll the wheels in and then they sit like with the thing in front of them, <sighs> the back in front of them. Yeah, and he's hey like, man. <laughs> Hi, it's me. And he does one of the elbow arm shakes because he's gloved up. He's scrubbed up, so he does one of the elbow, <laughs> not an elbow, not a slam. Well, not not a body slam. He does one of those like, oh, I can't shake your hand, but I can elbow tap you, like we all did in COVID. And he's like, hey, I'm I'm <laughs> Doctor Wacky Guy. <laughs> you should go. He does one of those like. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Wacky guy. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's not put did you quit recording. <laughs> you should have. Did you did you stop? <laughs> Jeez, man. So Colm Kelleher, I don't know if he was an actual like on site director or if he was a remote director, kind of like uh Bigelow was. Yeah. But he goes to George Knapp. Do you know who George Knapp is? Mm-mm. George Knapp is the reporter who broke the Bob Lazar story. Okay. And so he and he ever since Bob Lazar has been a huge alien reporter guy. Sure. Um, they co-author a book um, and it's that book hunt for the skinwalker. Sure. Um, Science confronts the unexplained at a remote ranch in Utah could have left the last part off, but it made it sound more smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and so it's just this 300 page book of stories of things that they've seen at the ranch, but no evidence, no pictures, no proof that it, they talk yeah. about all this data that they got and they don't present the dino beaver. There's no work cited. There's nothing in this book um, of substance other than just interesting stories. They put that book out <clears throat> and a guy at the Pentagon reads it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hate <laughs> that there's people who work in the Department of Defense that like make sure our country's safe. And in his free time, not even his free time, probably on the clock, <laughs> is reading about Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. If you're a government employee listening to this episode, I don't care what level of government employee. Maybe you're the president. Yeah. Joey. 
or maybe you're you drive a city bus. All right, all the way down, whatever level of government employee you are, quit doing this. We're not for you. <laughs> Be a professional. <laughs> Listen to boring podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we are not a news source. <clears throat> we are a news source. We're more of a comedy and podcast. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> are so you doing something, Jeremy? Right Jeremy Lukaski. Um, I think that's how you say his name. Sure. Um, Jeremy Lukaski. He reads the book and he's like, "Oh, this is. We need to look more into this." And so okay. he works with Harry Reid and he becomes the director of OSAP. Um, yes. And he starts leading the research and they go hard into Skin Rocker Ranch, trying to figure out what's going on. A year after he takes over the rain, the rains. You people, said Skin Rocker Ranch, just so you know. <laughs> and I would love it if they did a music festival out there. <laughs> Skin Rocker. It's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's what the the uh, trademark is for is media stuff. Yeah, so they're set up already for it. Um, trademark. So a year later, um, the uh, Harry Reid is sending around this a tip stuff. Okay, and he's like he's like okay, this is getting a little crazy. I need to get special make this a special access program. So you have to have the highest level clearance to be a part of this um, for a lot of reasons. One of which being, this is getting really weird. I don't want anyone digging in our affairs. Sure. Um, unless I can kind of control who's. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so he applies for a special <laughs> access program, and it's denied. Um, and when it, he goes to that SAP process, then that means, and it gets denied. It goes out to the whole Pentagon. I, I, I think that's something that they do. Where if like you start a project at the Pentagon and it fails, they send it to they all your hair <laughs> <laughs> What an idiot, dude! Look at this guy. <laughs> Hello, Pentagon team. <laughs> we just wanted to inform you that someone in the building <laughs> tried to keep some secrets. Well, we'll have you know that that's not allowed here unless we say so. Signed the Pentagon. The Pentagon. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> and then enter. You're about to send to 230,000 recipients. Are you sure you want to do that? And everyone sees it. Enter, say, enter. <laughs> the contents of this email are confidential <laughs> and are being kept. In the- do not tell anyone <laughs> except for the 230,000 people on this street. I don't know how many people work at the Pentagon. It's, it's probably not 230,000. <laughs> have you been in the Pentagon? No, have you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the subway. Uh, <laughs> I've, I have been to the Pentagon though. Why? Inside? They do tours. No, they don't. Yes, That's they do. That's pretty insecure. They, <laughs> they do look tours. At, come look at our cool thing. Uh, My grandma took me. She loves this country. <laughs> 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 I'm serious though. She took me. But yeah, we did a tour. Okay. So now the whole Pentagon knows about OSAP and a tip. Uh, and uh, the whole Pentagon's like, why are we yeah, spending we taxpayer dollars on this? And they were like, also, we can't let anybody know about this because they were like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So they shut the program down. They lock it up. A couple years later, Lukaski retires. A couple years after that, Harry Reid dies. <laughs> it was old age. It had nothing to do with the Pentagon. Hey, oh, is that what you were? You were trying to apply something. I thought you were just pausing for dramatic effect for some reason. I was like, yeah, he died. You want to see a picture he of that guy? He went, he died. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, so <laughs> so this program gets shelved and it's gone. Uh, meanwhile, Luis Elizondo is working at the Pentagon and he reads the email he get. He's on the slack chain with everybody seeing how much it flopped and What's he's their like, email just <laughs> Luis at Pentagon dot <laughs> gov <laughs> Pentagon dot com. They couldn't get gov. No, I said gov. <laughs> they couldn't get gov. They couldn't. Oh, okay. They couldn't even get cob. It's just org. <laughs> dot biz. <laughs> Pentagon dot, dot biz. <laughs> Is it available? <laughs> Why'd you say that like that? Is it available? Why'd you say that like a church puppet? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> when when puppet ministry was really big, 2006 baby. <laughs> Is it available? <laughs> oh, it's not available. What did Moses do next? <laughs> not available. Pentagon um, dot law is and that sounds like that shouldn't be, uh, but it's expensive. All the Pentagon. What about expensive. Pentagon dot music? I'm thinking about putting out an album. <laughs> what about Pentagon Pentagram dot gov? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a thing. Um, okay, uh, so 
<clears throat> Luis Elizondo, a few years later, it gets shut down, and he was like, remember that thing that broke and that didn't work out for anybody? What about OnlyFans.gov? <laughs> It's for that the seems, government. It's a payment subscription <laughs> where you just see all their all secret the secrets. stuff. <laughs> you get an email whenever someone doesn't get a special access program. You're added to the list. Subscribe to our mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it is exclusive content, you know. <laughs> uh, so they, uh, uh, he's like, he's like, man, we got. That we should thing? start one. In OnlyFans. Yeah, because they. <laughs> They want us to. They, they've been asking <laughs> us. They want us to do it. <laughs> Just like that other YouTube. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, so they, uh, Luis Elizondo is like, remember that thing, a tip that got shut down? He's like, wouldn't it be cool if I did that? Um, and so he gets permission okay. from his boss to, in his free time, uh, head up a new a tip. But it's not an official program, right? It's a hey. If I am here at the office and like there's nothing to do, can I look at alien pictures? It's like model trains. No <laughs> one's no one, like you don't need the Pentagon's permission to do it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's and he's it's, like he's but you can. It's like if it, really what it was is like hey, is it cool if I look at pictures of aliens? And his boss is like, I don't care. <laughs> That's really what it was. Okay, uh, and he was like, it's a tip. And, and he's so like, he, nice. So he gets off the call off the phone with his New boss. New window. Incognito <laughs> seals aliens, <laughs> and so he calls up all his friends around the Pentagon, and he's like, "Hey, what do you my think boss- the Pentagon's internet security is like?" It's a good question. Probably pretty good. Probably pretty assume. good. I would assume they, they got a VPN. Can't stream Hulu there. Yeah. Well, you know? you, they, they got a special government Hulu. Oh. <laughs> do they? It's like Hulu, like you know, people who like watch Hulu out of like Great Britain or something, so they get yeah. different shows. <laughs> you should see what they have on the Pentagon. Too. We had to sign up. We had to. We had to finally break and buy and get Netflix because of the password stuff. Oh really? The password sharing? Yeah. I barely use Netflix. I want to cancel it. Bree watches it a lot. Anyways, uh, so he called you up all his. Cancel it then. <laughs> <laughs> you can't know. Oh hey, wow, that's so weird. Quick little I don't marriage know why it's advice. Not uh, you should just do what's good for you. All right, <laughs> uh, that's what I've learned. And you should just uh, cancel it. And then when she brings it up, she'll be like, "I was watching them." And be like, "I don't use it." I've never. I don't even know what Netflix. It's like is. when I've never my wife used all of our high V fuel saver points <laughs> to fill up her car because she was like, "Well, my car gets worse gas mileage," and I was like, "But I bought the groceries." <laughs> Those are my points too. See, that's the thing. It's R now. That's what it's she said, R. and I said, yeah, "Well, our implies them. that I would also use them." <laughs> he calls up <laughs> all his friends at the Pentagon, and he's like, "Hey, my dad said that we could have a sleepover." Oh wait, he said, "Actually, <laughs> if my boss said we could look at alien pictures if you want to come to my office this afternoon." You guys want to come <laughs> over and look at aliens? <laughs> and so they start looking into aliens sure. in their free time on like their lunch break and yeah. stuff. And um, because they're in counterintelligence, they do have access to stuff that the average person doesn't have access to and they see stuff that the average person doesn't see um, and but it's not an official program and it has zero funding and they're uh, it's arguable that they probably shouldn't be spending their time on the clock doing it like it, it's it's the sort of thing where it's like ah, if you got I don't really care like if you got time whatever who cares, but you shouldn't be spending his working hours doing this. It's kind sure. of what it is. Um, does that for a few years and then quits the Pentagon to join to the stars and talks about all the stuff that he's seen. So this web, this the storyline is built on the back of a guy who's claiming to be a part of this organization that he's barely a part of. Okay, um, I mean, he's a part of the Pentagon. He wasn't involved in the actual OSAP where the a tip name came from. He just adopted that name for his little club, his little after school okay. club. Um, <clears throat> he was barely involved in the original asset program. There's one reference of him in the book, which is him like telling a story of like war stories uh, at like dinner at the ranch. Like, okay, they invited him over and they're like, you know stuff about aliens and he was like, do I <laughs> do I know stuff? And so he came and told stories about that and his psychic abilities and stuff like that. Um, so <laughs> that's the only reference of him in the book. What? Okay. They go. They leak this this thing, and and he joins to the stars. He becomes whatever he we is. We let people like that in the Pentagon, though. 
<laughs> He's like, I have psychic abilities. Yeah, I'm a psychic. Um, uh, and that 20- feels like, dude, that feels like one of those questions that should be in the interview. You know? <laughs> hey, uh, question. Two questions. Do you think you're a psychic? We're uh, watching Big Brother I right now. No, I'm a psychic. And there's a a contestant who got removed from Big Brother for yeah. doing the one thing that you can't like the you absolutely cannot do on TV. Yeah. Well, in general. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And he works at the Pentagon now. <laughs> He left Big Brother, and they were like, "Let's get like, him." They're like, we want that guy. But that's what I'm saying. Like, he yeah. works the he works at the Pentagon, yeah. and he's like, "Yeah, one, I believe in aliens pretty fiercely, yeah. and two, I'm a psychic." And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, you know, the second part, like, I would believe in aliens if it wasn't for how crazy the people who believe in aliens are." Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. If there was one person who I respected who believed in aliens, I might consider it. So <laughs> Connor, if you just want to like slow pan in on his face when I say that, that was good. I like that. <laughs> so in uh, the all this stuff comes out. We yeah. saw is telling the story of his involvement with a tip and James Lukoski, Jeremy Lukoski is like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> no, you're not. And so he calls Colm Kelleher and George Knapp who wrote that first book and they were like, let's write a book. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> he's retired now. and not put him in it. <laughs> and so they wrote a book to set the record straight basically to be like everything he's talking about is not what we were doing. He had his own little club. We had an actual government program and here's what we did um, and it was okay. kind of him throwing shade at Luis Elizondo sure. to be like what he's claiming is not sure. Maybe he looked at some pictures in this free time. We studied stuff. The government fo- pulled our funding because they didn't think it was worth taxpayer dollars, but we, we did, did stuff. real stuff. Okay, so they put this book out um, and they uh, um, the New York Times the author of the New York Times article. She sees this uh, this book. She reads the book. She sees all the articles and they she gets access to that uh, initial leak video the TikTok yeah. video um, and when she gets that video, she is like a big UFO person like a real big fan of the whole UFO story and she recognizes that the whole Skinwalker Ranch storyline um, does not help what she wants to do. She wants the public and particularly the government to start taking UFOs seriously. And so she says we need to trim all the Skinwalker Ranch stuff out of the story. We need this to just be this UFO video because otherwise that does not accomplish our goal. So she's trying to appeal to me <laughs> she's, because she's like all this stuff is what makes us look wacky like wacky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so and there's I guess two sides of this argument like if if your goal is to do that, then she made a good decision, but she's a journalist and so she should be telling the story like okay. how it is and not leaving stuff out of the story because the real the reality but, of the story okay. is there was an interesting UFO video that we can't explain, um, but also but the can't that just be the story, uh, but there's a, a very important part of the story where uh, where the government spent twenty two million dollars investigating werewolves on this, some ranch in Utah and but those are separate stories. I think <laughs> uh, they're overlap. There's th- yeah, but this, just because they overlap doesn't mean you can't just tell one of them. Uh, I mean, I I see what you, I, see, I see what you mean and I, I would agree. I would agree, but I think Understanding that all of this started because there was a billionaire who bought, or a millionaire, not a billionaire, <laughs> don't want <laughs> a millionaire who bought some land and was like, "Oh, it's spooky," uh, and convinced a guy that he's got on a string for his campaign budget to s- invest a bunch of money into it. Which that's a story. Yeah, uh, and out of this program came this video mm-hmm. of like, "Oh, this is the UFO story." Then that goes into the public eye, and that that's a separate story. That leads the Pentagon to spend a lot more money investigating this UFO stuff when it came from something sketchy to begin with. I, I, it's they are isolated stories and they can stand alone, but I think it's important to understand where this part of the story came from. Okay, because otherwise we wouldn't have this part of the story, and because there's something really sketchy and weird that happened here. And so Leslie Kane, that's the 
that's the girl who wrote the article. Yeah, um, she kind of massaged it to keep the part she wanted the public to hear in the story and silence the Skinwalker Ranch storyline. Um, the reality of it is, is Luis Elizondo, the guy who's kind of the the linchpin of the authority in the storyline, wasn't connected to the real ATIP program. The real ATIP program was Ghost Hunters International. Yeah. National. <laughs> okay. Ghost Hunters. International. National. national. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all that to say, uh, you should still believe in aliens. <laughs> is this where you're trying to land? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, uh, are you trying this, to say anything? You this, got so passionate about how she what, had to tell what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what the I'm trying to story. say. What I'm trying to say is Someone this group my of people. Life. Oops, this group of people. <laughs> I'm, I'm just as scared. <laughs> <laughs> Both those people. <laughs> this group of people, uh, with the exception of maybe Christopher Mellon, who's the guy who's standing at the podium right now. Which, okay. Based on the way he's standing, is questionable. Now <laughs> he's an alien, alien, dude. I don't know. I I love Tom DeLonge. He's one of my favorite musicians. But none of these are actually should, credible. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we should trust what they're saying. Um, oh, it's interesting. What do you? What are you looking? What did you like do? A whole for? episode. Just to be like, you were right, Jaron. I'm not saying you were right. Uh, I'm not saying you were right. It feels like I'm it. not saying you were right because we never covered this story. Okay. Well, um, we should have. It was part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't know. Oh, we, we didn't, didn't know. know. We didn't, we didn't know. know until the work that Stephen Green Street did <laughs> to connect the dots. Um, the the Tic Tac video and the stuff that came from those videos is probably pretty legitimate. Um, sure. And the work that's being done with it now is probably pretty legitimate. Um, but, but it's not okay. But a lot of what's happening right now is built on a foundation of Skinwalker Ranch, and that's something that we should be like, huh, that's weird. That's all I'm saying is the foundation of this stuff is weird. Um, okay. So there's a uh, Stephen Green Street did like a nine part series on this. It's really interesting. Uh, it's worth watching. Um, I'm going to show you a clip for it from it in the act of the fiddle because I just need you to see it. Um, <laughs> do you have time for this stuff? What? When do you watch these nine part series? Well, it's been he's been releasing it for a year, so I've been watching them as it, they've been coming out. Um, okay. And I'm just now compiling. He filmed my thoughts, them like three years ago when I, he went to the moon. I remembered calling you when he put out the first one, and I was like, "This guy's making a pretty convincing case on all this stuff." Oh. And then I was like, I was like, I'll put it in an episode. And it's taken a year for him to finish the series, so it's been a year since I've told you. Um, but it's, I don't know. Uh, the moral of the story is, uh, it's important to look at the source of a story and say, should I trust them? Uh, and if you are looking at us and saying I trust them, that's perfect. We are the most trustworthy source you could look to. Yeah, We're this never whole wrong. episode is Tim just going. We did an episode on Skinwalker Ranch, and honestly, we should just disregard all that. Well, we actually said it was garbage in that episode. Yeah, we said it was a stupid. I said concept. it was that way, and you're I a did people too. pleaser. I did too. And so you agreed. I said it was bad because you were like, yeah. Well, no, I really. If but you then we stopped to, recording, and he was it, like, he was like, I, I believe, believe every all bit of it. it. <laughs> I believe the whole story. Because <laughs> I only said that to save face, but I, I really love believe all Skinwalker of it. Skinwalker Ranch. Um, well. Anyways, it's an interesting story. Uh, watch Stephen Green. She's reporting on it. It's sure it's good. Um, Dino beavers aren't real. No, but, but the devil are. is you it- fiddle them off. <laughs> Hey, thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, If you like this and you want more episodes, there's more somewhere around here and also clips from the show, Uh, but make sure you subscribe. Please do that. That really helps us. Um, It makes us feel good. We look at the number and we go, oh my gosh, there's more people who like us. Um, And it also just makes sure that you don't miss episodes in the future because we put these out every single week and there's so many in the past, so many old episodes you can go watch. You know, there's an entire season of episodes that we didn't even have video for, so you can go listen to those if you'd like to as well. Thanks for being here. We'll see you again next week on on things I learned last night. That's this podcast, called, right? right? That's this one. Yeah, that's the one. Things that's, I learned last night. That's the one. All right, you're free to go. Great. <laughs>